Budget discussion continues. Norman Apartments, meet the SWAT team, and the future of journalism. This is OU Nightly. And the budget battle continues at the Capitol. Today, the House passed a bill with a 56 to 38 vote. Now this bill is headed to the Senate, where all the previous bills have died. The bill includes $60 million worth of cuts across various agencies, but still uses millions of dollars in rainy day funds, carryover cash, and revolving money. It also includes a recently passed measure to raise gross production tax on le legacy wells. And following the passage of both bills, Democrats and Republicans released statements. House Speaker McCall said the budget plan today by the House of Representatives will immediately end health care, the health care crisis created by the loss of revenue from the cigarette fee and will ensure that vital health programs and services will continue without interruption. While not a perfect solution, this bill absolutely addresses the immediate need. The Democratic Caucus responded. Today's passage of the revised general appropriations bill, House Bill 1019 reflects a failure of the Republican majority to listen to their constituents, invest in the state's future, and uphold their commitment to continue services for our vulnerable population. Populations. Republicans' leaders have thrown up their hands and claimed this budget is the only option. And the Oklahoma Department of Health spokesman announced today the agency does not have enough money to pay employees beyond November. Spokesman Tony Sellers said this while lawmakers debated the most recent budget proposal. State auditors are performing an investigative audit of the health department due to the financial concerns. And are in. Democrats flipped another state house seat after much frustration over budget shortfalls and scandals. Democrat Allison Eichley Freeman defeated Republican Brian O'Hara in Tuesday's election for a state Senate seat in Tulsa by a total of 31 votes. Eichley Freeman's win is the fourth pickup for state Democrats in special elections this year in Oklahoma, where Republicans dominated in the past. And no, it wasn't a new cop show being filmed at apartments on the south side of campus. Crately apartments are set to be demolished later this year and provided Norman's local police with a unique opportunity for SWAT training. We can um, help out our, our partners on the joint uh, Norman OU SWAT team by providing them a facility where they can uh, breach doors and windows. Behind these fences, were a round of sessions for a joint group of Norman and OU officers. The steel doors and empty space provided the perfect setting for this important officer training. Well, looks like they had good weather for it. I'm loving the weather today. Leah, what's going on? Thanks guys. So this is a live look right now. We do have this cold front that has been moving through our state and that has been bringing with it drier conditions behind it. Here is a look at our dew points right now. As you can see towards the southwest, we are very dry, only a dew point of 34 here in Norman. But as you get more towards the southeast, it is a lot more moist there. So they are seeing very humid conditions right now. So not very comfortable if you are down in the southeast. Now, coming up, I will be talking about a lot of wind shifts that we are going to be seeing these next few days, a roller coaster of temperatures, and then a cold front that's coming through Friday. Back to you guys. Thanks, Leah. And Sammy Steele joins us now in the News Center with the latest on the president's visit to Asia. Sammy. That's right, Shay and Abby, the president is back in D.C. after his trip through Asia. At his press, press conference this afternoon, Trump discussed strengthening alliances and creating fair and reciprocal trade. But the biggest topic at the conference was in regards to North Korea and the threat the country brings to the rest of the world. That we will not allow this twisted dictatorship to hold the world hostage to nuclear blackmail. I called on every nation, including China and Russia, to unite in isolating the North Korean regime. Trump went on to express the only way to do this is through cutting off ties of trade and commerce until the country denuclearizes. 
And this afternoon, House Democrats introduced articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump. Congressman Steve Cohen is sponsoring the resolution that believes Trump is a danger to our nation. We're calling upon the House to begin impeachment hearings immediately. We have taken this action because of great concern for the, our country and our Constitution, our national security, and our democracy. We believe that President Trump has violated the Constitution, and we've introduced five articles of impeachment. But Democrats acknowledge their efforts have little to no chance of success since Republicans control both houses of Congress. And authorities believe they have found the gunman gunman's motive in yesterday's deadly shooting in Northern California. Kevin Neal shot and killed his wife Monday night. Police think the murder started the whole string of shootings where he killed four and injured at least 10 others. Neal's sister Sarah Snyder says her brother had been struggling with mental health issues for at least 20 years but this past year his condition had declined. And Shea Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell floated Attorney General Jeff Sessions as a replacement for Roy Moore. The Alabama Senate candidate accused of sexual misconduct and assault of teenagers when he was in his 30s. Thanks, Sammy. And still ahead on OU Nightly, a special guest discusses the future of journalism. Plus, no time to waste as Norman helps their community. Welcome back, and Sydney Forsey is here with more on the earthquake lawsuit. Yes, you guys, Oklahoma's former lead size mall just felt pressured by a University of Oklahoma official to not link the state's earthquake surge to oil and gas production. Reports show that Austin Holland's testimony came in a lawsuit for damages during an earthquake in 2011. OU President David Boren says he cannot comment on the allegations because he has not has seen a copy of Holland's testimony. Holland claims he was also reprimanded for helping publish a peer review article on how to cope with man-made earthquakes. And the Senate has approved a bill to allow oil and gas drilling in Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Refuge with a 13 to 10 vote. Alaskan Senator Lisa Murkowski says the drilling will create over $2 billion in royalties with $1 billion going towards the state. Drilling in this particular region has caused a nearly 40 year political standoff. The almost 20 million acres of land is home to polar bears, caribou, birds and much more. While it's said the drilling can be done safely with new technology, there is still concern for the surrounding environment. And the city of Norman is hosting its annual household hazardous waste collection event this Saturday in the parking lot of the Lloyd Noble Center. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. residents can dispose of items that are not allowed in typical waste collection bins or cannot be taken to a landfill. Items that are accepted include cleaners, chemicals, computers, tires, oils, and paints. Organizers are still looking for volunteers to help with the event. If you would like to volunteer or get more information about this event, contact Norman's Environmental Services. Well, you guys, last year's event was pretty big. They had almost 2,000 households mm -hmm. bring uh, items to this event. So hopefully maybe this year it can be a lot bigger. Hopefully so. It sounds like they're doing a lot for the community. Hopefully it will be more successful this year. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, guys. And November is the month of many awarenesses, one of being the awareness of prostate cancer. Gaylord Professor Robert Kerr understands firsthand what it's like to live with prostate cancer and how important No Shave Movember is to many men affected. Yeah, it's amazing how much more real it becomes. Uh, you know, I was aware of it, and I would see people growing mustaches sometimes, and I, I think the college has had, you know, some awareness campaigns the last few years. Now you feel like you're a part of it now instead of just something that, well, that's just something that happens. It's, it's something you're really a part of, and I nearly grew a mustache this year, but uh, uh, some people in my life said it looked terrible, so I ended up uh, giving in. Next year, maybe I'll ignore them. No, I the Student Public Relations Chapter and Lindsay and Asp, which is a student-run advertising agency, are joining together to host a benefit night to support men's prostate health. The benefit will be Monday night from 5 to 10 at Diamond Dogs on Campus Corner. And still ahead on OU Nightly, Oklahoma is bringing sexy back. And Leah has more with weather. That's right, guys. It is beautiful outside. It is beautiful outside right now. Coming up, I'll tell you about the roller coaster week we will have. Welcome back to OU Niley. Look how beautiful it is outside. Those trees are turning colors. It is just simply gorgeous. It looks like fall. Doesn't quite feel like fall. We have temperatures right now, 64 degrees, a very gusty wind north, 15 miles per hour. And then we're also seeing very dry conditions as we do have a very low dew point. 
right now. Now, these next couple days, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a change, but tonight we're going to see those decrease in temperatures. We're going to get to 45 degrees by midnight. The clouds are going to be increasing as well. As we get in towards to, um, to later tonight, we're going to reach that low of 42 degrees. It is a little bit warmer as you get down towards the southeast. That is where that cold front hasn't quite made its way through yet, so they are seeing those warmer low temperatures for their night tonight. Now, for tomorrow, we're going to warm up. We're going to have another beautiful day temperatures in the 60s. We're going to have some gusty winds. We're going to see those cloud covers just sticking around all throughout the day. Now, Friday is when we're really going to see that temperature change. So like I mentioned, another 62 degree day tomorrow for our high temperature. It's going to just be simply gorgeous weather with the clouds blocking that sun. Now, here's where we see the real roller coaster. We see that 62 on Thursday, and then we warm up to a high of 77 for your day on Friday, and then we drop back down to the 60s as we get in towards the weekend next week. Now, this is because of this high pressure that we're seeing signal over our area, but then this cold front starts to sweep its way through as we get in towards Friday. That is going to keep the temperatures on Friday warmer, but then Saturday, we're gonna see that decrease of temperatures as that cold front finishes making its way through Oklahoma. And we're also gonna see quite a wind shift with that. We're gonna have very windy conditions on Friday. We're gonna see gusts of up to 35 miles per hour and then windy conditions as well throughout the weekend. Now looking ahead at our next few days. So we see Friday, we have those gusty winds with that cold front that's going to be coming through. As we get in towards next week on Saturday, we see the temperatures cooling down to the 60s, making it a beautiful day for your game day. As later next week, we're gonna see temperatures in the 50s on Sunday, but we'll be back into the low 60s as we get into early next week. Sounds like we have some good weather coming. I'm definitely excited about that. <laughs> yeah, quite a roller coaster of temperatures, but beautiful overall. Yes, I can't wait. Thank you so much, Leah. And Sam Brown has more on the new college football rankings. Sam? Yeah, that's right, Shay. The Sooners are back in the top four for the first time in two years. I'll tell you more about how they got there. And it was quite the night for college basketball. Sports is next. Welcome back. Last week, the Sooners made another statement in the race for a national championship win, or national championship rather, with a prime time win over TCU. OU's offense lit up the Horned Frogs defense, and while Baker Mayfield added to his Heisman resume, the story was Rodney Anderson. A sophomore running back became the first FBS, FBS player since 1996 to record at least 139 rushing and receiving yards in the same game. But as Lincoln Riley said, the offense can't get too complacent against Kansas and their talented defensive line. I think the guy that's really stepped up, and he's been a good player for him for years, but the, the wise kid, uh, the, the defensive tackle, he, he, he'll be the best defensive tackle that we've seen all year. And that, that's, counting, that's counting Ohio State. That's counting anybody. I mean, he has had a tremendous year for them. He is very, very disruptive. You know, when you've got that kind of dominant guy on the inside, it, can, it, it really affects what you're doing offensively. So we're going to have to. Should be a fun matchup to watch. Kickoff is set for 2.30. But in other college football news, the newest edition of the college football playoff rankings came out last night, and there were a lot of changes at the top. After two top four teams lost on Saturday, Alabama moved up to the top spot, followed by Clemson at number two. Miami and Oklahoma entered the top four for the first time this season. Undefeated Wisconsin is at five, and Auburn, who upset top-ranked Georgia on Saturday, comes in at number six. Staying in OU sports, the men's basketball team is hosting Ball State tonight at 7. The Sooners dropped 109 points on Sunday in a win over Omaha. And freshman point guard Trey Young got his first college double-double with 15 points and 10 assists. This will be the last game for the team before the PK-80 tournament next weekend. Meanwhile, the women's team played against DePaul last night but lost in an overtime thriller, 111-108. BV Pierre-Louis dominated again for OU with 25 points and 16 rebounds, but Amara Coleman for DePaul hit a three-pointer at the buzzer to give the Blue Demons the win. The Sooners will be back on their home court on Friday as they take on T or SMU. Last night, the State Farm Champions Classic took place, and what a night it was. In the first game of the night, senior guard Grayson Allen scored a career-high 37 points as number one Duke pulled away from number two Michigan State 88-81. And after that game, Svee McKaylick and number four Kansas squeaked by the Kentucky Wildcats by a score of 65-61. 
and the OKC Thunder wrap up their three game home stretch tonight against the Chicago Bulls. The Thunder haven't quite found their groove so far this year, but Paul George has stepped up big lately, averaging nearly 40 points in his last two games. Hopefully they can take advantage of a Bulls team that has only won two games so far this season. And it's early in the season, but Nooney Omot might have dunk of the year in the bag all over that defender, gets the pass, gets fouled, doesn't even bother touching the rim, just straight up throws it in the hoop, guys. An unbelievable dunk, but actually breaking news out of Dallas, running back Ezekiel Elliott has decided that he will remove his appeal mm -hmm. and will serve his six-game suspension fully. So big loss for the Cowboys. Well, definitely. As a Cowboys fan, that is... Not fun to hear. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but no it's kidding. good for everyone who's not a Cowboys fan. So exactly. Oops. It's true. I know the game it's this true. Sunday She's... against the Falcons. I was we were missing Zeke for sure. Yeah. But I would wrong. just like to say, how is OU number four? You know, I feel I, like we should I, be I number agree. two. I completely agree. I, I was agree. Shocked. And even even the fact that we were ranked behind Miami, I think mm -hmm. is, is, OU was ranked behind Miami is kind of crazy to me. Well, you know, if you look at the record and who we lost to versus Clemson's record and who Clemson has lost to, I mean, we beat the better team. I don't see why we're number four, but yeah. that's just me. Thank yeah, you, Sam. I agree. Still to come on OU Nightly, Oklahoma brings the sexy back. Welcome back. Harley Toothman joins us now with a special guest from the Neiman Lab at Harvard University. Joining us today is Joshua Benton, the director of Neiman Journal Journalism Laboratory at Harvard University. So the lab's mission is to report on and research journalism innovation. So what are the latest developments and what are newsrooms doing today to adjust to the digital age? Well, the big shift is, is not a particularly new one. It's the shift from print and broadcast to digital. Essentially, everyone is competing for people's attention and time uh, on, a, on a common platform. Uh, the second part of that big shift is the, the move to mobile phones. Uh, instead of just thinking of it as a smaller screen, you have to realize the different ways in which people get news on their phones than they did on their laptops. They're going through social media app, predominantly Facebook. They're going through push notifications. There are a number of ways in which the experience of consuming news is different there, and publishers have to adjust. Going into that, so since your start in journalism, how has technology changed the industry? Well, I'm old enough to remember the days before the internet when you just wrote a story in a newspaper and came out once a day. It was a nice, calm time, <laughs> uh, and everyone made a lot of money. Things are a little bit different now. The, the financial underpinnings of the industry have been disrupted a bit, and certainly everything sped up quite a bit. So coming from a journalism student, where is the future of journalism, as in, will I have a job? I, I very much hope you'll have a job, and of course, as a graduate of Gaylord to be, you're, you will certainly have a good job. Um, but they are increasingly going to be in digital, and they're decreasingly going to be based in local communities, which I think is a really risky thing. P individual cities and, and metro areas are going to have less coverage, and national areas are going to have more. So to learn more about the future of journalism, Joshua will be speaking tonight in the Gaylord Auditorium at 7 o'clock. And what can the guests expect? Well, I'm, the, the framework that I'm going to be working with is projecting forward what the news industry is going to look like in about five years. What are the trends that we're seeing now, and how are they going to push forward? Um, some, some good things and some not so good things coming, I think. If you can't make it tonight, you can actually watch it online at ou.edu slash TV starting at 7. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. And we will talk back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Harley. One of Oklahoma's own has a new title. People Magazine today named the voice star and Oklahoma native Blake Shelton the sexiest man alive for 2017. The country music artist recently opened up a restaurant called Old Red in Tishomingo near where he lives. Now, I don't know about you all, but I am going to have to beg to differ. I, don't I, know if I agree. agree. I like his music, but I don't know that I would consider him the sexiest man alive. You know, Exactly. I would have to disagree. I personally would say he's the sexiest man alive. See, I'm Drake. Any, if it was up to me, Drake would win sexiest man I, alive I would, every year, forever. I, I probably would have said Adam Levine over. And Blake you know, Sheldon. he did win sexiest man last year. So interesting how that worked out. But now we have a weather fact of the day, Leo. Tell that us is what's right. going on. So I'm going to tell you guys about some tornadoes, actually. Now, this time in 1987, 22 tornadoes spawned from thunderstorms in eastern Texas and in Oklahoma. It cost $70 million in damages. Wow. That was just insane. That's a yeah. lot of money on damage. That's devastating. Yeah, that is crazy, and that's very, very devastating. So hopefully there are not many tornadoes 
in the forecast coming no, up. No, none, coming, none coming up at all. Not in the coming <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Either. Beautiful I weather hope this next week. Ever, maybe. Hopefully not. Yes. <laughs> but you never know with Oklahoma because the weather is crazy. Very true. true. It's true. Well, thank you guys for watching OU Nightly brought to you by the Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. And you can watch the discussion tonight at www.ou.edu slash TV or on this channel.